Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Back to Basics, The Mighty Egg with Tricia Keneally. My name is Mina Jane, and I am one of the programming librarians at the Cary Library. So happy to be here this morning. Um, I wanted to tell you that about an this Back to Basics series. We're trying to do a weekly session on different topics on just basically how to um, do things yourself. So like things like sewing, financial literacy, um, hairdressing. So keep a lookout for that on our website. Um, I'd like to let you know that we are recording this session with Lex Media and we are always happy to partner with them. Um, I'd like to thank the Cary Library Foundation which supports all of our adult programming and um, I would like to ask you to turn your videos off while we are um, spotlighting Trisha so that the recording just has Trisha's lovely cooking. Um, if you have any issues, you can let me know in the chat and I will take care of them as best I can. You can also ask questions in the chat and I will feed them to Trisha as she's cooking. Um, let me see what else was like. Oh, Trisha, I have to introduce Trisha. Um, so Tricia Keneally has been with, working with us for the entire summer on all kinds of cooking shows. We're very, very pleased to have her here with us for this very first Back to Basics uh, program. She is the owner and chef at the Inn at Hastings Park, which is a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful place. And she's actually cooking from there today. So we're excited to see the kitchen, which we normally don't get to see, and to learn a few really wonderful ways to use the Mighty Egg. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Tricia. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tricia Fred Neely. I'm delighted to be here again with all of you and with Cary Library. Um, one of the highlights over the last few months has been for me to be able to teach cooking lessons via Zoom. And we've done several of those for the library. So I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the to kitchen at the Inn at Hastings Park. Um, I'm here today because we're getting busy for our reopening. We will be opening next Wednesday um, for lunch and dinner. We'll be opening Wednesdays through Sundays, and we're really looking forward to seeing all of you again. Of course, we have a very long list of protocols that we will be adhering to so that people can feel safe um, when they come to enjoy dining here. So when Mina asked me to do this, to talk about basics, we're gonna be doing one of these for the next, once a month for the next few months. And I believe it's the first Thursday of every month. So I wanted to start with one of the most essential elements and ingredients in cooking. And that is the egg. The egg is an incredibly versatile, healthy source of protein. And there's so many different things that you can do with it. So, and I actually, this is a tribute to my culinary education at Le Cordon Bleu, because one of the first classes that we ever take or any student at Le Cordon Bleu takes is about egg making. So before we started today, I actually put two eggs in a saucepan on our stove top. You can see there's two eggs in the pan. What I did was cold water, I added the two eggs, and then I brought the water to a boil. As soon as the water came to a boil, I cut the heat and then I covered it with a tight fitting lid. And I left it for 15, for 12 minutes, it took a little bit longer because we were waiting to start. But for 12 minutes is usually around the time that you would want for a perfectly hard boiled egg. What I have here is an ice cup. I have cold water and ice cubes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my spoon and I'm going to put the eggs in the ice bath. The reason we do that is that it stops the egg from cooking. If you allow the egg to continue cooking, it's not bad for the egg, but that's what's gonna cause that grayish tinge around the yolk. That's what we call oxidation. So in order to eliminate that from happening, I'm putting it in the ice bath to stop it from cooking. And then I'll come back in a few minutes so that I can show you how we peel those eggs. So the eggs that I'm using are actually eggs from Wilson Farm. Um, we are very lucky to live in an area where you have access to a variety of farm fresh eggs. Meadow Mist, um, I'm not sure if she's um, back up and running and selling eggs to the public, but I do know that Codman Farm out in Lincoln is selling their eggs. Their eggs are raised on pasture out in Lincoln, on conservation land throughout Lincoln, some of it in the national park. 
um, they're kind of really beautiful diets. So what you see when you open up those, those yolks is an incredibly beautiful color. And that's a sign of the health and the, the way in which the egg was raised. So I'm gonna start off today by making a scrambled egg. Most people think, oh, scrambled eggs, really easy. The way that I was taught the French method was incredibly, uh, incredibly time consuming. What they do actually is they often make their scrambled eggs over a hot water bath. What that means is they take a pot, like the one that I used for the hard boiled eggs, and they bring the water to a boil. And then they would use a metal bowl like this and insert it over the top so that it's sealed and they would continue to cook the egg on a very, very slow heat. They're delicious, they're fabulous, but that's not really the most practical way to make a scrambled egg when you're trying to get breakfast for your family or you're just trying to do something because you wanna have a meal relatively quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up the burner. I'm actually gonna put this one on sort of a slower flame because if you put the scrambled eggs into a hot pan initially, the eggs will really cook very quickly and you won't get that soft texture that many people associate with having a scrambled egg. So what I have here, I have a silicon whisk and the reason I'm using this is that I'm actually gonna use this whisk to whisk the eggs inside of the Teflon pan. I am using a nonstick pan because it really is sort of the best thing to use when you're making an egg. I'm just slightly breaking the yolk here and I'm gonna to continue to scramble that when I put it into the pan. I actually am gonna use a little bit of butter today to scramble the eggs. I think that it enhances the flavor. I also like making scrambled eggs with olive oil, but it really is a matter of what you prefer. Some people for health reasons like to work with cooking sprays. There's a lot of different high variety cooking sprays that you can use when making an egg. But what I always talk to people about butter and olive oil is that everything is okay in moderation. With about a tablespoon and a half, or I mean a tablespoon would be a generous amount of fat to use for making the egg, but you could do it. And, and that's a reasonable amount of fat for somebody to have in one meal. The butter that I'm working with is Kate's butter. Kate's butter is made up in Maine. It's available in most of the supermarkets in this area. It's just regular butter. It's not terribly soft, but I'm gonna put that in the bottom of the pan. This is also a good indication of whether or not the pan is hot enough. One of the things I talk about when cooking is if things begin to stick, it means that the pan is not hot enough. So I know because of the speed with which the butter is melting in this pan, that we're ready to go. So I'm gonna pour the eggs into the pot and I'm just gonna continue to stir. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna begin to see sort of ribbons forming in the pot. Trisha, did you put anything in the eggs? Um, I actually did not. I'm gonna put a little bit of camp mix. Some people put cream in theirs. Um, if I were gonna put cream in butter, I would wait until the end. I am putting a little bit of camp mix in, which is a combination of salt, pepper, there's a little bit of celery salt in it. This is also available locally at Wilson's. I also have seen it more recently at Market Basket as well. But it's a really versatile one way to get a variety of um, seasonings right into what you're doing. So if we come in tight on the pan, you'll see these curves beginning to form. And that's what you want to happen. If you're in a hurry, you could probably bring up the heat a little bit, which I'm gonna do for the sake of filming. But I'm gonna to continue to stir it with that silicone spatula. So my kids like their scrambled eggs in a variety of ways. One of them likes to have cheesy scrambled eggs. So right about this time, if I were making cheesy scrambled eggs, I would add a little bit of shredded cheese. Look how quickly that came together. I'm actually cutting the heat on the pan because this is a professional stove, so it's really, really intense. So as you can see, these eggs are just about cooked. They're what we, we they're, 
they're what we would refer to as soft, right? Because it's just coming together. And I'm gonna put these on a plate, a white plate, so that you can see what they look like. Um, Trisha, what was the cell, uh, the spice mix called? Called camp mix. Camp, C-A-M-P, like as if you were going to boys and girls camp. Yep. Called camp mix. Got another it. Thing, another spice that I like that people have heard me talk about is this Sunny in Paris spice from Penzi's. What I loved about this, these are some very traditional French flavors. It's dried scallions. There's a little bit of chervil in it. It really adds a nice brightness to the egg. I like this on my scrambled eggs, and I also often sprinkle it on my hard boiled eggs. So the next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna clean the pan out really quickly. And if you're cooking eggs for various people, I'm just using a paper towel here. And the reason I'm doing this is that if you don't, you're gonna end up getting some sticking on your, on your pan. The next thing I'm actually going to make is... Oh, Trisha, one more question from Effie. Um, when adding like something like fresh onions, do you cook them first? Um, what a perfect segue to the next thing that I'm going to do. So I have some diced pepper and ham. Of course, you could add onions to this as well. You could add mushrooms. I actually think it's a wonderful idea to cook off the vegetables. You, adding them to scrambled eggs is a fantastic idea. What I'm gonna do is I have the ham and the pepper. I'm doing a little squirt of oil because I want those peppers to soften up a little bit and I want the ham to be heated through. A true omelet is supposed to be cooked very, very quickly. And the amount of time, because it's so short, the vegetables wouldn't cook. Of course, there's some people who may prefer to have the crunchiness of their vegetables, but I actually like to have them slightly cooked off. The other thing too is that this is also fabulous. You can add any sort of chopped vegetables to your scrambled eggs to add a little bit of color, a little bit of flavor. Sometimes also one of the traditional French preparations is they also add, like to add smoked salmon, um, which also tastes really delicious in the scrambled eggs. sausage meat or something like that, you do want to make sure that you cook that a little bit, um, a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, I'm going to put my pan on a medium high, like a medium heat. I know that there's already some heat in the pan because a professional burner has a pilot on it, so it tends to run a little bit warm. If you were doing this in your home, I would recommend a medium heat to start. I have Trisha's here. Was that Penzi spice um, called Sunny and Power Spice? I can show it to you. It's called Sunny Paris. Oh, wrong way. Sorry. Oh, I'm going too fast. The <laughs> you turned around. There's a, there was a little bit of zoom. This is from Penzi's, which is located in Arlington. But what it has in it, as I said before, it's shallots, chives, green peppercorn, French basil. French tarragon, chervil, bay leaf, and dill weed. So this reminds me of the herb steam that they use in French cooking. Like a very traditional French omelet would just be an omelet, roll, that rolled egg, 
with those little uh, combination of those fresh herbs. But I think that this adds a really nice touch of flavor. So I'm gonna use my spatula, getting rid of the scrambled egg that was hot in my spatula. I'm gonna beat these slightly. Let's show them what that looks like. All right. So the key to making an omelet is you kind of have to work fast. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to put my toppings right next to me and I'm going to pour the egg in. And I'm basically letting it on around. And you see those, those herbs forming. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna push in a little bit and let the egg sort of come out a little bit around the sides. So if you have not had the opportunity to watch Julia Child do her demonstration on eggs, it's something that I would highly recommend. As you can see, the reason I'm shaking the pan is I, I want to see if it's going to come off the pan because that's going to be an indication that I'm sort of ready to flip. Is that the episode where she makes um, like a stack of them? Oh, yeah, she's, yeah, she is unbelievable. She must have made thousands of eggs um, in writing her cookbook. I enjoyed that episode a lot. I think people should watch it. So if I were putting cheese, which I'm going to put some cheese in today, this is the point at which I'm going to put it. I'm beginning to see dryness in the egg, but there's just a little bit of liquid left. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of this shredded cheese. I'm going to add my ham and my pepper. We might have to try this one again. I might have had too much oil in the pan. I'm going to let it step a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of heat to that because the front of the egg isn't setting as much as I would like it to. But this is also a note to everyone. Cooking is something that's meant to be practiced. It's not always going to be perfection every time. We shoot for it, especially in a professional kitchen. But when you're cooking for yourself at home, you just kind of go with it, right? This is going to taste good no matter what, right? Because it has the peppers, the ham, has a beautiful egg in it. And I can tell I have a feeling that I didn't adhere, there we go. I didn't adhere to my own rule and didn't clean that pan out um, as well as I should have. What I should have done was completely wiped it down, but I didn't want to move out of the shot because what's happening is I'm getting a little bit of a stick in the middle, um, in the middle of the egg. But now it's ready to flip. See that? And I could tell exactly where the sticking was happening on the plate. So this omelet would be way too much color for my instructors at Le Cordon Bleu. Their idea is a perfectly golden yellow. I personally like it cooked a little bit more, so I kind of cooked it to my taste. And now I'm gonna flip it out. Trisha, what are the best cheeses to use in an omelet? Something that melts quickly. Um, I like to use like um, like a shred like the shredded. There we go. There's your omelet. A little bit of, see, I got a little bit of sticking because I hadn't cleaned that as perfectly. So in terms of the cheeses, there's so many different cheeses that you could use. Um, um, you want it to be, some of the harder cheeses, if you're gonna use a Parmesan, you want it to be grated. Um, that was a mixture of cheddar and Monterey Jack. Those tend to be some of the meltier cheeses. You also could use mozzarella. The, the, if you were going to use the fresh mozzarella, I would cut it into very, very small cubes and use it sort of sparingly. I wouldn't put like a big slice of mozzarella like you would have in a caprese salad. I think that that would be a little bit difficult. So I would stick to, and um, Gruyere also tastes amazing. Gruyere, Smith, Smith. Gruyere, Swiss, cheddar, Monterey Jack, like one of the spicy Jack cheeses. Those would all work really well. 
Um, if, we're, if you were doing something like spinach, this is actually a very good point because I actually like spinach and cheese in my omelets. Make sure, like I do it two ways. You can either cook the spinach and totally squeeze it so you get all the liquid out or use baby spinach and just give it a hit of heat and then put it in the eggs. If you do something in the middle, like if you don't cook the spinach at all and then put it right into the egg, the spinach is gonna release a lot of water and it is going to make your egg a little bit watery. All right. The next thing that I'm gonna talk about is- Wait a minute. Oh, one second, one second. Yeah. Effie asks, if you do not wanna make an omelet, is it okay to add eggs directly to onions, ham, etc., after they are cooked? Oh, of course, that's a fabulous idea. Um, and that's also the basis. Um, my daughter and her friends are living on their own and doing school remotely. So I gave them a list of 30 recipes for them to try because they're cooking for themselves. There's no dining hall. But just the other night, they actually made a pork fried rice. And one of the things that, I mean, an egg is in the pork fried rice. So what we do is I would have like, you know, I had a little bit of onion, a little bit of garlic. This is how I sort of did it. It's kind of my own, inter my own interpretation, if you may. So we had sort of the onions and some of the other vegetables, a little bit of garlic. We cooked off a little bit of ground pork. And then right before we were getting ready to add the, add the rice, we had two eggs that we'd beaten and then we scrambled them with all of that and then added the fried rice. So that's a really quick and easy meal that you can do with an egg. I think it took us, we had rice already made from a previous meal. I think that took us about 15 minutes to put together. So, thank you. Those are um, scrambled eggs go with anything. Um, as many of you know, I'm from Puerto Rico and a very traditional meal in Puerto Rico for breakfast, lunch, or dinner is to have white rice, some beans, and to put a fried egg on top of it. And it's delicious. So for my fried egg, we're gonna go with the sunny side up egg today. What that means is that the yolk will be facing up. So when people talk about the different ways that they like their eggs, over easy means that the, the egg has been turned over and the yolk is still soft. So that if you were to cut it, you would get that, you know, it would run, the yolk would run. Um, if people like it over medium, it means that it's slightly cooked. And of course, if they want it over hard, it means that the yolk is completely cooked through. It almost looks like a, the yolk of a hard boiled egg. So what I'm doing is I'm heating up our pan here. I am gonna put a little bit of the cooking oil. Actually, I'm gonna use butter because I think that most people would be using butter at home. And it's important when you're doing a hard, like when you're doing um, fried eggs, I like to have all of my eggs cracked already. I don't necessarily like to crack it over the frying pan because you run the risk of getting eggshells in it. So I'm taking, I have my one egg yolk and I'm pouring it right in the middle. And again, what you see, you know, that white, that egg white is coming together. The other thing that you can see right here, actually this is a great shot. You can see that there's like sort of different parts of the egg white. There actually are three parts in an egg. There's the egg yolk, then there's the tighter egg white, and then there's another part around it. And so as the egg gets older, that outer part begins to get, like it begins to sort of loosen and whatnot. But you can sort of see it in that stage of cooking. So when the egg is over easy, there really is no need to flip it. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this shininess on the egg to become a little bit less shiny and more, um, like this is still a little bit, this looks very wet, this looks drier, and that's sort of my indication that this is ready to go. And I can actually see, I'm gonna take this one off and I'm gonna show you, I have a feeling, I could have used a lower heat. Um, this is up pretty high. I'm gonna cut the heat on it because uh, I can tell, I have a feeling that the bottom part of that um, of that yolk is a little bit soft. It won't flip it over in a minute. <laughs> right, and so what I would do here is I would add a little bit of salt or, or my favorite seasoning, 
One of my sons is very particular about hot sauce, um, so that would work as well. So we have three eggs there so far. So, hey, Tricia? Yes. Trish, um, how do you know that the yolk is um, sort of that creaminess, not the runniness? Like water, sometimes it's watery if you don't cook it enough. Sometimes it's watery. The question is that sometimes the yolk is watery. Right, if you don't cook it enough, it seems like. Yeah, so what you want to do is, you know, what we talk about is sort of having jammy eggs. Um, what it is is you really kind of have to play with the temperatures at which you're frying the egg. So what you want to do is you do want to get that high heat, that, but then maybe what you want to do is cut the heat and take it down to low so that the heat is a little bit gentler on the yolk. Um, I'm going to just flip this over because I want to see. See, I can tell that that's already a little bit cooked and somebody who really likes an over easy egg might not really like that. So I probably should have put the egg in on high and then cut it to low to ensure that that yolk was cooking but not cooking through. So what I would recommend is eggs are something that should be practiced. Decide to have breakfast for dinner one night. Grab a group of, you know, grab your family, grab your friends, get a few dozen eggs and just keep trying it and see what you like. It sounds like, oh, is that like, it's actually a really good investment in time and money. Buy a dozen eggs and keep practicing and figuring it out. And I'm telling you that if you do it three or four times in succession, that repetitive action of doing it right then and there, I think you will learn a lot. And as I've said on all of my other cooking classes, my email is tpkeneally at init Hastings Park. If you have a question, just email me. I'm more than happy to engage. There's people that I've been engaging with about their recipes. And that's also a really good way to learn is to ask other people who have done it before. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a very simple setup for a breakfast sandwich. This is a go-to breakfast in the Keneally household. Um, especially now that we're all spending time together with remote high school. My voice started yesterday. So I'm going to wipe out this pan. And what I'm going to do here is I'm also, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to cook the egg yolk all the way through because one of my children, that's the way they like their egg yolk. So again, I'm going to take that pat of butter and the butter's getting soft because it's warm in the kitchen. There we go. And I'm going to put this one on medium heat. I'm going to time this one. I think I can do this in about three minutes. I have an English muffin already toasted and ready to go because that's a great thing to put um, a breakfast sandwich on because it fits perfectly. I have some Canadian bacon, which is perfect um, in terms of, you know, nutritious amount of protein, not terribly high in calories, not high fat content. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to use my spatula to just move that butter around a little bit. I'm going to take my egg, and put it right there. So what I'm going to do a little bit differently on here is I want there to be melted cheese. So I have my shredded cheese ready. And I can see, um, the, once again, you see the egg is drying. You can see the difference between the two egg whites, the, the two different parts of the egg white, because the part that's tighter to the yolk is staying closer to it and taking a little bit longer to cook because it has a slightly different texture. Now what I'm going to do is I purposely am going to flip this egg, and I'm going to give that yolk a little bit of a poke. And now I'm going to add a little bit of the cheese. And my sign that we're ready to go is going to be that that cheese, uh, because it's the shredded cheese, is ready to melt. The alternative is, is that you could use sliced cheddar, a thin slices of cheddar, and put it all over the surface of the egg. And again, once it's ready to melt, you're good to go. So I'm going to grab our English muffin. So what I would do normally if I were doing this at home and making this for the kids, 
I would put the English muffin in the toaster oven, get that toasting, and while that is happening, I would have my egg and my ham and my cheese ready to go. And then as soon as that English muffin is ready and done in the toaster, I know that I'm ready to put it all together. As you can see, I'm just flipping it. You can see the yolk is put through. I'm flipping that onto, oh, look at that nice healthy cheese. Yeah. And there's breakfast, right? That's a high dose of protein very quickly. I also, I mean, I think this is, you know, this took us less than five minutes to make. This is a fantastic breakfast. If you want to hand it to the kids in a little bit of foil as they're walking out the door, or if you yourself want to wrap this up and take it as your maybe one day soon commuting to work, um, this is a fabulous way to enjoy breakfast. So I'm going to go back to those hard boiled eggs. So my hard boiled eggs were sitting in the ice bath. They're nice and chilly now. And what I'm going to do is, there's the top of the egg and the bottom of the egg, and there's an air pocket. What I did is I, cracked it on both the top and the bottom, and then I'm going to roll it. And what's going to happen is it peels right off. So I'll do that again. You can kind of see, can you see, are you getting it? Can you see that indentation? That's where that air pocket is, right? So by Cracking right there and making it really easy. All right, so my, the top of my egg, the bottom of my egg. You can actually even tell, like when I crack it, that there's a little bit of space there. And again, you know, obviously, if you're doing deviled eggs, you want those eggs to be. Oh, I didn't roll this one. You want the, the peel to be beautiful. But again, it's one of those things. We cannot get stressed about the little things. If the food is going to taste great, that's really that all, all that matters. Obviously, you want it to look pretty. But if it's not, if it's not pretty and it tastes good, it's awesome. You cook for yourself, you cook for your family, you're good to go. And Trisha, you started those in cold water. You Oh, right. they start the eggs in cold water because if you start them in hot water and it goes, it's going to go to boil quicker, the, the, the egg will not have cooked enough. I had heard something about steaming them, but, but that was because something about um, being able to peel them easier. Right, so peeling them easier, I put them in an ice water bath, so I stopped the cooking, right? But that also makes it easier to peel. Did I miss the okay. question? I didn't hear. I, was there something else about that, that made it easier? No, just somebody. I saw something on YouTube about um, steaming them as opposed to boiling them. Steaming them. Well, actually, yes. I mean, there are various ways that you can make hard boiled eggs. We actually, when we're making large quantities of eggs here at the inn, we will steam them in our combi oven. So as you can see, that's like a real, this one, you know, some people like their yolks to be less cooked. If you do, I would recommend cooking it like 10 or 11 minutes. This was actually probably closer to 15. If it was at that 12 minute mark, it might have been um, a little bit more golden instead of that pale, sort of that pale yellow. The other thing that I want to show you See, I could tell that these were there. The, you, you, began, you began to see the oxidation because I cooked these probably like a minute or two longer. If you sort of leave your eggs in the hot water and just leave them sitting there, this will become almost more gray. There's nothing wrong with eating that. It's just oxidation that's happening. The other way that you can make the, heart, the eggs, a lot of people, um, to we'll cook a little bit more, I have something called an immersion circulator. You might have heard of sous vide if you like to go out 
to eat a lot. So the immersion circulator, what it does is it maintains, it creates a hot water bath that is, that it is at a consistent temperature. So there are different ways, like people talk about a 60 degree egg. You see that a lot on menus. What it is, is that it's that temperature where we've killed off the bacteria, right? We don't have to worry about the raw egg, but it still has that beautiful, like runny yolk that's absolutely beautiful, like on top of the salad. But if you're doing hard boiled eggs and you're doing a lot of them, you can set the temperature for the desired color of the yolk that you want. And you basically can leave the eggs in the immersion circulator for you know a few hours and you'll have a perfectly cooked egg yolk but for most people doing it in a pot you can boil up 12 eggs in a larger pot the key is cold water put the eggs in bring it to a boil cover it with the lid and then let it sit without like move it off of the burner that it was initially on and let it sit for about you know 10 to 14 minutes depending on the consistency the color of the yolk that you want. Remember to have that ice water bath ready so you can plunge the eggs immediately into that hot water bath so you're stopping the cooking and you're preventing the oxidization. So that was the basics of eggs. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. I just wrote that I'm getting really hungry. Um, okay. What do we have for questions? Yes, so um, people can type their questions into the chat, or you can unmute yourself and ask uh, Trisha directly. Um, I wanted to ask you about the eggs themselves. You had said that the fresher eggs, the better. So where do you, I know you have to buy in bulk for the, the inn, but like where do you generally buy eggs from? Well, actually at the inn, the eggs that we use for, um, for breakfast are actually from Codman Farm in Lincoln. Um, so we're buying eggs, you know, when we got our eggs, they were laid either that morning or in the, the, the prior days. I am pretty particular about the eggs that I buy. I also buy them at Wilson Farm. Um, the eggs come from a farm, you know, the, the Wilsons know the farmers that are raising the eggs. They used to have chickens on property, but they no longer do that. Um, Podman Farm here in Lincoln, Meadow Mist also usually has eggs. But if you have access to something like that, where you can go and get an egg like that, I would really recommend it. As part of that experiment or practice of making eggs, I would encourage you to try one of those farm fresh eggs next to um, an egg bought at a traditional supermarket. And I do think that this is one area where organic versus free range does make a difference. It's also very important to know that just because a chicken is free range doesn't mean that it's been fed a quality diet. You really want to make sure that you pay attention to the labeling on those eggs to make sure that they've been fed a good diet in addition to being around to being allowed to roam freely. Thank you. Um, so we are getting a bunch of questions. V asks, if you cook over easy, how do you make sure it's cooked enough? What about salmonella? Um, if you cook over easy, um, if the if your egg white is cooked through and you're looking for there not being any moisture, you don't need to worry about salmonella. You, you pass that point. Okay, thank you. Randy asks, how do you suggest cracking eggs with a knife on the edge of a bowl? What's the best way? So, as you're getting started, I think it is a good idea to use the knife, like use a knife or a fork to just give that little bit of a crack and then open it. Um, I think that as you get better, people do become more proficient at cracking the egg. When you get into you know, professional kitchens and pastry chefs, people are doing with a lot of eggs, you will see them be able to crack with one hand. But again, that is something that needs practice. The reason I would recommend starting with a knife or a fork if you're just new, if you're new to cooking is that when you crack the egg, you have to practice cracking on the surface of a bowl. Because I remember when I was teaching my kids, we went through two eggs, we made a few messes. Sometimes they would do it too hard and there would be egg everywhere. And that's okay. Like it's okay to figure out and make messes. And that also means that you're gonna get shells in the bowl. So you really just want, you know, start off with that little bit of a tap and then practice on that side of the bowl. But the objective is, is obviously we really want to prevent there from being eggshells um, in whatever we're cooking. Absolutely. Miriam asks, 
Do extra large eggs take a little longer to cook? Is it better to stick with regular size? So I actually, I'm a big fan of the large egg. Um, I just think that it's a perfect size. Um, I like the amount of protein, the calorie count. Um, extra large eggs will take slightly longer to cook because they are, you know, they are slightly bigger. Um, you do want to pay attention to recipes. I know that I at Barton's cookbooks use a lot, use extra large eggs. So the recipes call for extra large eggs. So if I'm doing something out of her cookbook, I will, especially if I am baking and a recipe calls for an extra large egg, you do want to make sure that you use that because the recipe has been designed with that in mind and the slightly different liquid content could have an impact on the recipe that you're making. I'm muted. <laughs> I was muted. Thank you. Um, let's see, I'm told, Effie says, I'm told fresh eggs are more difficult to peel. Are more difficult to peel. Yes, there are, yes, there, that, there is some validity to that. But I think if you use the cold water bath method, that will actually help make it easier. And again, remember, there's a top and a bottom to the egg. You want to sort of tap on either side and then slightly roll in gently. And that should also help with the peeling process. Okay. And V asks, how can you tell if an egg is too old to cook? They talk about like egg, like the, the, um, that a fresh egg will stand up in, a, in, in water and that it'll kind of begin, it'll begin to flop as I do it up. It, it'll flop. Um, <laughs> it's not. But I, you know, it's funny, like I've often looked around like you should try it. But eggs don't actually last that long in my house. Um, we sometimes go through, we sometimes go through a dozen eggs on a daily basis if we're all having eggs for breakfast. And I also, for those pet owners out there, eggs are a fantastic source of protein for pets, and they're sometimes they're less expensive than the conventional conventional dog food. So our dog, our dog eats two eggs a day. Wow. Um... So any other questions, people? We're, we have a couple more minutes, if, um, although I do know Trish is very busy today. So um, if you have any other questions, um, feel free to keep typing okay, them. Otherwise. A lot of the time, but please, as our guys are getting busy to reopen, please, please, please come and support your local businesses here in Lexington. We need all of the support that you can get. As you can only imagine, being closed for close to six months is a very difficult thing for any business. So we really, um, we're here to all the protocols that have been distributed by the state. We're even taking those a step further. So we really do want people to feel comfortable and safe. It's open for reservations. When you feel more comfortable with takeout, we can do that too. But let us know how you feel. We really want to see you back in person. Are there any more questions about eggs? <laughs> No, that was it. But Muffy did say, thank you very much. It was wonderful. And I would agree with that. You're always wonderful, Tricia. Thank you so much. And we'll see you. We'll see you on October 1st, same time, where we learn how to make the perfect roast chicken. Fabulous. Thank you, everyone. I so appreciate you being here. And as I said, if you have any questions, I really need it. P.P. Keneally at inithastingspark.com. I am happy to answer any and all questions about the class that we did today. And really, in all honesty, if there's any questions about recipes that you're making, really happy to be a resource for you. Thanks Thank so you. much, everybody. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.